All right, here we are with another episode of Inside My Showroom. Okay, you not forget it. This is getting too hot. <laughs> uh, let me out of here, man. <laughs> okay, welcome to another episode of Inside My Showroom. Uh, here I have Chris with myself, Omar. Uh, we will be discussing um, Deadpool. This is an episode dedicated to Deadpool, Deadpool, and Deadpool. Uh, so here we are, episode seven. We have a lot to talk about. Um, before we get started, just say hello, Chris. What's up, guys? Glad to see you back on another episode. Let's get this thing started. Okay, let's jump into a, uh, a screen share here. Uh, uh, I'm just going to take control here for the viewers. Please let me know when you have it on your screen, Chris. Yep, it's there. Okay, so here is Deadpool original OG EX. Uh, this is, like I said, the EX, the exclusive version. He is choking his chicken in uh, non bad terms here. Uh, he got the two swords on his back and he has his arsenal. I am going to let Chris take the show on this one since he's a bigger Deadpool fan than I am myself. Uh, and Let's get started. Yeah, guys. Um, so this is uh, the original Deadpool premium format by Sideshow. Um, really sought after piece, really a Deadpool piece that a lot of people have in their collections and a lot of people want in their collections, including myself. Um, I think it's really well made. Um, I think this is the perfect example of why I like fully sculpted pieces because in his costume, you could see all those creases all those wrinkles you know and I, I think that's the awesome thing about fully sculpted um statues that you could see all those tiny details with mixed media i feel like you kind of miss out on those on potentially uh all those crazy nice intricate details and um one thing i, I was telling omar earlier one thing i love about the statue is the base um i don't know I, it's pretty simple you know it's pretty basic but I don't know. I just feel like those uh, those bullet shells on the side just it complements the statue perfectly, and I love it. I agree. Um, what I also like about the base, like uh, the whole reason why Deadpool is in my collection, first of all, is because um, you know I found out about him from the Marvel versus Capcom games, which goes years and years and years back. Yeah. Um, I just love this character. I loved using him in my battle, my setup that sort of thing. Uh, awesome moves, great job on that game. Um, so I got him to be part of my X-Men collection. Uh, you know, even though like he's an outsider, sometimes he's for the X-Men, that sort of thing. He's just a twisted character. Uh, but what I like about this statue is I like the base. I like the fact that, you know, it's not the X, it's his own base. You know, like he just wants to stand out there um, you know, he makes a joke about everything, and I think that base really highlights that. Yeah, man, and a lot of people, um, I'm going to touch base on the new premium format that Sideshow is releasing now. A lot of people say, you know, it shows his character, you know, the funny pose, the selfie stick, the kissy lips. That's cool and all, but me personally, I like how the original has that, it's just massive attitude that he has in this pose, like, you could tell he's a badass, and they still touch up on that comical side of Deadpool with the exclusive hand when he's holding the chicken with the dynamite up his uh, butt crack. So I just, I really like that, and I, I don't know. It's a, it's a great statue. Oh, yeah, there is the dynamite. Thanks for uh, <laughs> pointing that out. Um, but, yeah, I just love the detail in this, like, you know, when you were just stating about, you know, at the back of the calves with the uh, the, the wrinkled outfit, um, you know, they, they didn't have to put that, but, you know, that's just his character, you know, like everything about this statue is, you know, either a joke or it's really detailed or, you know, I just love the fact that this is a very comical statue. Um, you know, I know a lot of people like to do like custom add-ons and that sort of thing. You know, if they want to like <clears throat> swap out like the, the gun, and put like one of those baby hands, by all means, I would display it. I would, that is so funny. Like that would be a fantastic <laughs> idea. I hope I gave somebody a good idea out there, man. Just put on a baby hand, swap out hand, <laughs> and uh, I would love to showcase that on this show. That would be funny. 
So um, let me just turn this around here so we can get a view of the weapons at the back. So are those like uh, pegs or like magnets that the swords attach to? Um, they are actually like um, on the outfit itself, so you have to be careful and slide them in. Oh, wow, okay. So um, the thing is, is that, you know, that's pretty cool. Like the whole samurai sword thing, you know, it's like, um, I'm not really too sure about Deadpool's history or anything like that, but you know, Wolverine has like a, uh, you know, a samurai background and yeah. I don't know if they're like making a joke out of it. And that's why, you know, Deadpool has these weapons or if he actually has like, you know, like a, a samurai background as well. I know he knows how to use the weapons, but I don't know if it's like, you know, making fun of Wolverine or what. <laughs> yeah. I'm really not sure myself. But they they do look great, and I'm glad that that's one of his main weapons. It's a cool weapon, you know, anybody with a sword. I mean, I play a lot of Super Smash Brothers, and I kid you not, like, I don't play any characters that don't use a sword. Like, I use Link, I use Ike, I use Marth, Lucina, Cloud. Like, all those characters have swords, and I was, I was just always a fan of a cool swordsman. Even when I played Yu-Gi-Oh, like, back in the day, I had a, uh, a legendary swordsman deck. So it's just something I was always intrigued by, something that I love it, you know? That's that's true, man. I love using Marth and, you know, just the, like the swords really, I can't display it without the swords. You know, I see some people's collections, you know, they don't bother putting on the swords at the back. Uh, you know, they feel that it probably takes away from it or it's not how they want him posed or that sort of thing. It is optional. I like it with the swords. Um, you know, let me just turn this statue back around. I got uh, one of my boys, Mike. Shout out to you, Mike. Thanks for tuning in, brother. Um, watching this live right now. He said Deadpool is dope. That's awesome, man. Uh, so you were talking about, like, the, the other head, the very right. head. So you stated that you like that one more? Yeah, um... I don't know. I just feel like there's more attitude inside of that portrait, um, let alone just the look of the face. Like, I'm not too much of a fan of the the classic Deadpool head with the big um, black uh, circles. I, I like the diamond look, the smaller black diamonds. Um, but aside from the mask itself, I just feel like there's more facial expression, like the eyes. You could see like a bigger difference. I don't know. Maybe it's just the pictures I've been looking at, but I think the other, the other head is uh, a little bit better. Okay. Well, um, yeah, it does look a lot more rough. It looks like a lot more detailed. You know, if you want to, like, display it beside Punisher Comic Hat, I think the other head would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You know, I was going for, like, the comical look here. Sorry I can't give you guys a display of the other head. I just have everything packed up. Um, this is how he's displayed in my showroom. Uh, and this is how, you know, I just decided to put him out there for you guys to see. No doubt. Well, Again, like there's the muscle detail, muscle detail in the legs. Uh, let's check out the arms. Okay, yeah, so man, that's, that's what I love about this piece, dude. Like, like I said, the perfect example of a fully sculpted piece. Like this is something that you could really appreciate. Like this is something that mixed media, a fabric costume couldn't achieve, bro. All those wrinkles, all those details. You can't get that with a, a mixed media costume. And that's what I love about uh, fully sculpted. I agree. And, but it's uh, cool though because the belt is like leather or something, no? It looks like it, yes. I don't want to. It it is, it is. It's not like sculpted or anything like that. So there is like some slight mixed media parts on uh, on this statue. Yeah. Um. You know, we're going to be discussing this whole thing actually later on in the video when we talk about like the Heat Seeker Deadpool. Um. You know. For me personally, you know, with prices being so high, I actually got this statue just recently after market prices, well over a G. Uh, and, you know, I had the option of going for the regular at a much lower price, but I'm sorry, man. I just have to really replace, like, display this with the chicken. It just, <laughs> it adds so much more to it to me. Yeah, man. Uh, Mike was just telling me he, uh, he says, what I like about this one is it uses just the right amount of mixed media. I agree, yo. I mean, 
you get most of the details of the costume fully sculpted and then a nice little touch like the the straps on his legs i don't know if that's sculpted or mixed media but you know a belt pack i think that's okay i think it'll complement the statue um and you know it's a it's a nice little touch okay so um you know anybody that is looking for a deadpool statue just for right now um you know, I don't want to touch on the Heat Seeker Deadpool, but I think this is going to be the one that people are going to be searching on, um, you know, trying to get their hands on and, uh, you know, try and get it whilst you can before, like, prices skyrocket even more on this piece. Yeah, man. You want to touch base on uh, Heat Seeker now? I mean, since we're already talking about Deadpool? Um, you know what? I do, but I just want to give that guy a shout-out that for his collection, the only reason... Oh, yeah, for sure. You might end up getting caught up and lose track of time and then you know he doesn't get to uh get his collection shared so uh let me just get in here Please, right, you see that yeah uh, that's on my screen now so um for our viewers watching this is a fellow collector's collection shout out to emmy niche sorry brother if i'm saying your name wrong um, but this is his collection. He gave us uh, permission to use it. So big shout out to you. Thank you for allowing us to uh, showcase this. Um, and dude, awesome collection. Um, I'm not sure if the pictures came across uh, small. So sorry if I had to zoom in. I'm pretty sure his picture quality was much more um, like higher quality. Yeah. This is what we got. But uh, we could still make it out here. So this is a ton of XM pieces. Mm -hmm. What is this guy doing? Like sitting on a gold mine here or something? <laughs> yeah, and man. We have some great pieces here. Uh, one of your favorites, the Spider-Man comic hat. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Daredevil, that's one that me and Chris were debating on back and forth. That guy, uh, Mike, that I'm talking to on Facebook, he uh, he actually just picked up the Spider-Man comic catch. So, yo, wow. congratulations. congratulations. Yep, that's a that great piece. amazing. Mm -hmm. So we got to get Mike's collection on here one day. Dude, I don't know if we're going to have enough time to go all over all his pieces, bro. Seriously, <laughs> it's nuts. No. Well, uh, you know what? All the better. We'll just donate like two half hours. <laughs> just talk. That's what we want to do, man. We want to get like as much information to people as possible. So Mike, if you're willing to bring it on, we'd love to share it. Sure. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do to you here, Chris? What's up? Uh, okay, let's play the game, let's do it. All right, <laughs> it's game time, it's game time. Okay, from left, top row, all the way to the right, Chris has to guess as many pieces as possible and be able to uh, tell us what the name of the statues are. Uh, these are easy, bro. So top left, we got XM Studios, uh, Iron Man, Mark 7, I think. I don't know. I get so confused with these Mark 5s or whatever. Um, but that's definitely Iron Man. Um, next to him on the right, we have Black Symbiote, Spider-Man, Comic Cat by Sideshow. Um, to the right of him, we have XM Wolverine. I was about to say X-Men. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll accept it, man. XM, X Men, it's same yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> to the right of that, we got, I think this is XM's first statue, no? Um, the uh, Captain America. Patriot Captain America holding the flag. Was that their first statue? Like their first. Uh, you know what, bro? Product? There are so many damn Captain Americas, it's so hard to keep track. Yeah. Great piece, though. I mean, yeah, I know a lot of people want that. This is one of my favorite Captain Americas I've ever seen. Yeah, man. Um, and you know what? I didn't even notice that. I can't really, it's kind of hard to tell. I, I noticed it on the darkness statue to the right of Cap, but he actually bought custom acrylic cases for those guys. That looks so good. You know what? I saw when those custom cases were, uh, first showcased. Yeah. Um, just like that. I thought that was a fantastic idea, man. Those things are really expensive. I'm telling you. Yeah, man. That looks awesome. Great like, job. You get something done like that over here, like 300 bucks a piece, you know? So it's Ouch. like you're basically spending like money on a premium format statue yeah. to, you know, but I really wish that all my statues could be like this. It would just make them safer to go out on this, like on the outside, right, right. everything having to be behind bestas or glass cabinets or that sort of thing. 
Um, I actually have two items on pre-order that I think I'm going to be leaning towards doing this. It's mm -hmm. the uh, Sub-Zero one-third scale by Pop Culture Shock. Nice. Scorpion uh, one-third scale by Pop Culture Shock. I would just love to have it on like, you know, pillars um, on either side of my TV and just have them in these like acrylic, uh, you know, cases and just, you know, because of like the kids or, you know, like little kitty running around or something. I don't want to see like Sub-Zero or, you know, Scorpion fatality on the floor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Not, not to cut you off. No worries. Um, I uh, appreciate that, Mike. He said, uh, I'm digging you guys' format. It's fresh. Thank you, brother. Um, so, okay, so to continue with the game, we got uh, – so we're moving on to the second row now, uh, far left. We got Thanos by XM, um, Empty Cabinet. No, no, that's not empty. That's Invisible Woman. What's wrong? <laughs> um, to the right of the Invisible Woman, we got the Spider-Man comic. Cat. Yo, by the way, one more time, congratulations, because you're going to love it, bro. I'm telling you gonna love that piece um black bolt to the right of him and then we got thor yo that thor is actually huge like is he like bigger than one four scale uh i don't know he looks comparable to um to black bolt there but at the same time you know what i don't really understand xm's measuring as one you know quarter scale statues because i find their statues Mm -hmm. Even though they label them as quarter scale, are just you know massive compared to you know sideshows quarter scale statues. Right, right. Especially, I know that you have that Phoenix by XM. That thing is massive, huh? I don't understand how these things can be quarter scale, man. Yeah, things are huge. All right, so uh, last row we have the Hulk premium format. Um, that's bottom left. Uh, next down we have Mr. Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil. Um, yo, that's a man. If I had the funds, dude. If I just Crap money every day out of my butt. I definitely pick that piece up, dude. That's awesome. Um, then we have the Son of Hulk, I think, Scar. Yes. Um, great piece too. I almost picked that up for like four hundred and fifty bucks. Oh my new. goodness! Almost, almost, almost. A couple months ago. Um, and I don't know what that is to the right, but it looks like he's uh, making some space for some pre-orders. So definitely excited to see what he's got coming in. Looks like it, man. All right, let's move along to uh, the next picture. So that's just uh, a closer up. You could actually really see those acrylic cases. Those look fantastic, man. Really, really great job. And the thing is, man, I always had this thing about, you know, when I was picking my displays, and I, I'm still going back and forth, but I always preferred the black, you know, to go with a black setup, black bestas, black pack system. But I don't know, man. When I see collections like this with the white, it just looks so clean, dude. I yeah, don't know. it definitely um, highlights the uh, the darker pieces. Like, yeah, man. you know, you can really see him there. Thor, I'm kind of, I don't know if it's just the picture, but his helmet is kind of getting a little bit drowned out by the light. Um, but again, you know, you can't go by the pictures. You got to see this thing in person. I guarantee you, any collection that you see, if you think it's fantastic by picture, imagine how it looks in person. I know. Okay, so I'm going to have to zoom back out in order to get to the next picture. Another great shot, man. We just, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, check out our last episode. Omar did a, a review of the XM Wolverine that you've seen this in this picture and dude what a great piece man what an awesome piece i love all of these pieces i really do it's just you know i don't have space for all of these but these these are like hand selected items here i'm telling you this guy knew what he was doing yeah. when he made these purchases i don't know if he had to like sell some old pieces or what but like how do you end up with a collection that are all fantastic pieces yeah, that's nuts. I mean, he's definitely uh, been very selective in his collection, which is uh, which is a great thing, you know. Okay, so I would like to save some time to get back to that Deadpool thing. I don't know if we're uh, gonna have to cut this episode a little bit short, but 
uh, you know, I want to just give this um, collection the attention that it deserves. Um, you see these white posts at the side. Um, that takes some awesome creativity. I know when I was doing my showroom, yeah. uh, you know, stuff does not just come like this. You got to be creative. You got to go to the hardware stores. You got to check out what they have. You got to check out, you know, what it can be displayed with. Even at the top there, those little fancy like pedestal designs and that sort of thing. Um, that's all added, man. He put those things on. You have to be painting, make everything look like it fits in. This looks like custom made, you know, and uh, look at like how he displayed things in here, man. Yeah, man. Great. Are those like pops on the top over there? Those pop figures? I'm not really sure, man. But nonetheless, great comic collection. Um I'd love to get, I forgot what they're called, man. I know they have a special name, those big, thick books, the Marvel books. Um, I always forget what they're called. Like the uh, Oh, uh, Omnibus, I think it's called. Oh, yeah? Yeah, those. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some of those as graphic novels at the bottom there, so. Yeah. Um, the books on top of those with the red Marvel label, I think oh, it's okay. called Omnibus. Those are, I don't know, something like that. But I'd love to get a collection of those. Those, those look awesome. And it fits perfectly, man. I don't know what's going to happen when he gets an extra one. <laughs> yeah, Mike just said it's an omnibus. Omnibus, yeah. I probably sound like a Ricky Retardo saying that. <laughs> wow, look at that shot, guys. He's, that's a, that's a crazy at, setup, man. Look at that. Am I seeing like a dog in the corner there? Dude, that is a dog. I thought that was like the padding of the, I don't know, that little seat cushion thing, but that's actually see, a dog. See, that dog is a smart dog. He has like the best view <laughs> in the house. You know, like I could see myself just relaxing there, falling asleep to this collection, you know. Um, you know, the fact that this guy has all Marvel pieces in his collection. Yeah. Uh, you know, he has all that marvel gear on the side marvel on the tv this guy's a true fan man you know he even paused it right there when he's taking his picture you know i wish a lot more people when they you know take pictures of their stuff they kind of stage things they get it set up rather than yeah. just you know taking a snapshot or something like that this is a collection at its best and uh you know you were the one who actually went out and uh, found this collection and I think that we're really privileged to have this in our episode. I feel very lucky. Um, great shout out, huge shout out, um, you know, to Ami um, for letting us share his collection. This is such an honor to have this in our collection uh, of episodes. And then, uh, you know, there's just so much to see here. Great custom cabinet around your TV, uh, hot lights, definite man cave right here yeah man uh much much appreciated man shout out to ami man thank you for letting us showcase this collection this is like omar said this is a true man cave you uh you could tell that this was well thought out this was not you know okay i buy a couple of shelves here this was uh thoroughly um you know you, you walk through the motions you planned this out and it came out looking fantastic dude so congratulations and thank you for letting us show this. And you know what's crazy, man? This is only like our, our sixth or seventh episode. What episode are we on right now? We're on episode seven. Dude, this is only episode seven. We're just reaching the horizon, you know? And look at the awesome stuff that we're already seeing. This It's crazy to think about what's more to come. And wait till we get to Mike's collection, dude. And wait till we get to showcase your collection. It's gonna be It's going to be crazy. I think to cover uh, me and Mike's collection, we might need like a 10 episodes or something like that. So, uh, you know, I think we'll be doing this <laughs> for quite some time. So if you guys are getting <laughs> sick of us, you know, sorry, we're, we're going to be sticking around here. Uh, so we're at the 24 minute mark. Okay. Um, I feel that we can, you know, talk about that heat seeker Deadpool for quite some time. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, do you, do you want to do it now? But yeah, like, bro. we're really hitting like, much more. So you want us to just continue this episode or you want us to stop it here? No, we could continue. Okay. Yeah. That's what I like to hear, man. <laughs>
Okay, so uh, Heat Seeker Deadpool. Yeah, so just a little bit of context, guys. Um, so Sideshow uh, fully revealed their uh, new Deadpool premium format figure, I think, at a San Diego Comic-Con during the summer. I think it was June of this year. And there was a lot of hype behind it. You know, a lot of people were loving it. A lot of people were hyped up. But they just released it for pre-order, I think, a day or two ago. And the price is six ninety nine ninety nine, so seven hundred dollars for the Deadpool, not including tax, not including shipping, and that's with no double rewards. That's with no free shipping, um, and the edition size is still to be determined. Um, and this statue has been getting loads of flack from the community. Everybody's a little bit pissed that it's seven hundred dollars. So that's what the discussion is right now. Okay, so, um, you know, the addition size is to be determined. Uh, you know, this is the exclusive version. Uh, lots of detail in this statue. Um, you know, so much more going on here. Um, I don't know, I think this is very close to a diorama, uh, the amount of detail that we're getting in this statue. Just so many different things going on. Um, basically, it tells a story. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the original, you know, it's kind of more like a museum pose. Um, you know, lots of comical gestures going on in this uh, new Heat Seeker statue. Um, you know, I just want to be fair to it uh, on both sides. You know, whether it is expensive or if people just love the character so much that, you know, they just decide to jump on it, purchase it, that sort of thing. So um, this is, you know, a statue that I actually spent quite a bit of time uh, just reading through what different people had to say about it. And I just wanted to share some of the comments. Um, are you able to see that? Yeah, bro, I got it. All right. Do you mind just reading those out? Okay. So uh, obviously, guys, we just left the, um, the names of these people um, anonymous, you know, just uh, for the sake of their privacy. So um, first guy said, if this is the new norm, then I'm out. No way I can afford 700 a pop for these. Um, and then the guy underneath that said, if this is the new norm, I'm out. So those two guys, apparently they're, they're a bit pissed that it's $700 a pop. Um, now, while I do agree that it's expensive, um, I can't lie. Um, just to be fair, honestly, in my, you know, I wholeheartedly believe this. I think it's a great looking statue. We were just talking about the, uh, you know, the fully sculpted details, you know, how you get all those details and you don't get that mixed media. Another prime example of what fully sculpted could get you. I mean, the pictures that you just had up on the screen, you could see, I think this piece has even more wrinkles in this costume than the original, just because of how dynamic the pose is, you know? Well, also the costume itself as well. You see like those black sides where his obliques are, or his shoulders, yeah. or that sort of thing. There is a lot more detail um, yeah, in this statue, a lot more. Um, it doesn't mean that the pose on the old statue isn't, you know, really good, right? Right. Um, I actually prefer the old pose better. Um, am I going to sell that statue to jump on this one? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm sticking with that original. Um, you know, just this price point, though, I have to say that um, I've been collecting for a long time. I'd say about 15 years I've been collecting. Um, I got to enjoy, you know, the cheap prices, uh, you know, when statues used to be like, you know, in the $200 mark and that sort of thing. Um, and I really feel sorry for the new collectors who have to pay these prices. You know, we can't look at the, this from just our point of view. You know, we have to look at this for, you know, the little, you know, people that are 15 years old, 16 years old, that sort of thing. And, you know, they're going up to their parents and they're like, you know, I love this statue. Uh, you know, I worked hard at work. Can I please, you know, purchase this? Um, or just new collectors altogether where, um, you know, people, they end up having to work hard for their money. Not everybody has like luxury paychecks where they can say, okay, well, I'm going to buy this, 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 and this, right? When you start seeing prices hitting this margin, 
you have to be very selective on what you purchase. And this actually came as a huge shock to me to see this at 699, right? So a premium format is hitting these prices now. Yeah, um, I completely agree, man. I mean, myself included, dude. I was hyped from all the pictures that I saw at San Diego Comic-Con. You know, I was anticipating this piece. You know, I was waiting for the pre-order. Although, you know, I'm not a, a huge fan of crazy dynamic poses. I'm more of a museum pose kind of guy. That's why I prefer the original Deadpool. But, I mean, it, it looks fantastic. It looks like an awesome piece. But for $700, and a lot of people make the argument, oh, you know, people are willing to buy, uh, you know, $700, $800, $900, $1,000 for an XM piece or Prime One Studios piece. Um, so it's only right that Sideshow bumps up their prices. But in, in the counter to that, you also got to remember, I mean, just take a look at the um, the last – Spider-Man premium format that they released that thing had an edition size of 7,500 pieces, you know, that's that's a massively produced product and it's We all know that piece didn't come out perfect loads of people came in with broken fingers paint rubs You know, there was loads of uh, QC issues on that piece when it's uh, widely produced like that So when you have companies like XM, yes, they charge $700 for a statue, but then you also got to take into consideration that their ESs are a thousand, they're 999. Some of their pieces are, are even like 700. You know, they're very low edition sizes. And from what I've seen, from the, the feedback that I get from the community, XM delivers top-notch quality. If there's something that they can improve on, they do it. If they can make something metal, they do it. The, the um, I think Cable, the new Cable that they showcased um, at the last Singapore Comic-Con, he has like these bullet, uh, like a bullet magazine kind of strap going around him or something like that. And XM decided to make that um, full copper. You know, it's not polystone it's not plastic it's copper it's metal and you know stuff like that you know you got to take into consideration yes i'm playing 700 dollars for an xm piece but it's very limited number one 1000 pieces or or less and i'm i'm paying for for great qc i'm paying for a great paint job i'm paying for great packaging to ensure that my statues you know coming in safe and i just feel like i could see why sideshow feels like they need to uh, raise their prices. But if that's the case, I think that there needs to be some sort of transition because at this, it has to go at the same rate. So you raise your prices, then you also got to raise the quality control. And the only way that you're going to raise quality control is by lowering the addition sizes. You're going to have less QC issues with the lower number of ESs that you got, you know? So although I do think this is a great piece, I don't think it's worth $700. Especially if it's going to have something like 5,000 ES. You know, I think that's a little bit bananas in my um, personal opinion. You know, we don't know what the addition size is going to be. Hopefully, they prove themselves for it to be low. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, though, is that uh, Sideshow has had um, a lot of issues with many statues. Um, we can date back to, like, go very, very far back. And we can go very recent of statues that are just you know not to xm's quality xm has proven themselves how can sideshow just all of a sudden just you know shoot out there okay we want 700 dollars for our statue and uh you know we have unresolved issues you know we have um you know a name for bringing out products that haven't lived up to the consumer's expectations we have complaints of people still re receiving like damaged items. Uh, we have people receiving, you know, chipped statues and these sort of things. Fine if you want to, you know, start calling higher prices on your statues, but prove yourself. Show that you're worthy of this. Correct your original mistakes first before you go and you start charging prices like this. Um, you know, they have broken a lot of their consumers' trust. And to all of a sudden just say, you know what, we are worthy of $700 statues. We're going to prove it to you guys. We're going to start off here. Well, you know what, this would have been a lot more comfortable had, uh, you know, they slowly start um, started somewhere earlier of having less complaints and 
there being more trust in the statue collectible community. Right. Um, and I, I do think that Sideshow has slowly been stepping up their game. So we have the He-Man statue they just released. Very well received. Not a lot of people having issues with it. Great paint. Uh, Lady Death premium format. Same same thing. Same deal. You know, people are, are very happy with it. Um, even the Aquaman premium format. I didn't really see a lot of a lot of flack or hate for that piece. People were pretty much satisfied with it. People so, were um, just stating that, you know, they didn't like the sculpt of that altogether, but, you know, they just want him to be, you know, part of their Justice League, right? right. Kind of the only chance that they get. Um, about that He-Man statue, that was going to be one of the, uh, the points that I was going to bring up later. Um, you know, what did we pay for that? We paid like three ninety nine. dollars Yeah. Okay. Um, those days of having premium format statues in the 200s is over. Fine, you know? Okay, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, but recently, we had premium format statues in the 399s. Yeah. And it seems like the one-fifth scale statues have become that new price point. Right, right. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I'm still out of shock that we're seeing, you know, premium formats being listed at 499 I'm still coming to terms with that. Like, uh, you know, I would love to pre-order that Cheetah exclusive or Huntress exclusive, four ninety nine, and then all of a sudden we're getting this six ninety nine statue. Uh, that's that's a huge shock. Um, yeah. Last month they announced Huntress and Cheetah, four ninety nine. You know, I'm debating. Hey, you know, like, do I kind of have that funds to be, you know, putting down in some statues? Before I can even get the chance to get adjusted to that, they're slamming down six ninety nine on Deadpool. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know, and you know, I feel like it would be okay if I okay. So going back to my old point, you know, if Sideshow thinks that they could raise prices like XM, then they ha also have to raise QC, and they got to lower the edition size. So let's say that they do. Maybe it's a possibility that. Um, they do lower the, the ES. I think it would be okay. I think it would be okay. If this piece turns out how it looks right now in the pictures, I could see people paying $700 for it. But I'm going to tell you something now. What was the addition size of Skeletor? 2500 bro. That's for one of the least popular franchises in this statue community. Everybody collects Marvel, DC. Masters of the Universe is like everybody's like lowest priority besides me and you you know it doesn't get a lot of love but yet we had a 2500 edition size on skeletor not a popular character in this community so if we have a non-popular character getting an edition size for the exclusive of 2500 imagine what deadpool is going to be that's all i'm saying maybe not because of the price point but i'm pretty sure they're going to have a hefty exclusive edition size i think that that's just me though and uh, Skeletor actually has limited numbers. I think uh, Sideshow had sent out emails stating only 15 are left of the EX. So, uh, yeah. Okay, you know what, Chris? Uh, we hit our t we've gone beyond our target time, and we still have a lot to talk about here. All right. So uh, let's cut it off here, uh, and we will do a second part to this video. Um, but... Let's just uh, end here. We're not going to be like saying our goodbyes or anything like that until the second part of the episode. So thank you very much. And please tune into the second episode. See you guys there.